Good evening. Let's read some more before I'm getting too tired. Because it's very hot always. Always very hot in my apartments. I have many, <coughs> many hundreds of aircraft I like to read about. But not just aircraft, I got a big pile of stuff I like to read about. So it's early evening. But that's, uh, that's too many aircraft. It's maybe it's not possible to do this. You cannot read about 1000 aircraft and then make a video about it. You will need uh, 10 years, 10, your whole life to do it. But let's read about this Douglas DC-7. I can find in the Microsoft Flight Simulator later. Douglas DC-7. The Douglas DC-7 is an American transport aircraft built by the Douglas Aircraft Company from <coughs> 1953 to 1958. A derivative of the DC-6, it was the last major piston engine powered transport made by Douglas, being developed shortly after the earliest jet airliner, the de Havilland Comet entered service and only a few years before the jet-powered Douglas DC-8 first flew in 1958. Larger numbers of both DC-7B and DC-7C variants were also built. Unlike other far more successful propeller-driven Douglas aircraft, such as the DC-3 and DC-6, no examples of the DC-7 remain in service as of 2020. Design and Development Edit. In 1945 Pan American World Airways requested a DC-7, a civil version of the Douglas C-74 Globemaster military transport. Panam soon cancelled their order. That proposed DC-7 was unrelated to the later DC-6 derived airliner. American Airlines revived the designation when they requested an aircraft that could fly across the United States coast to coast non-stop in about 8 hours. Civil Air Regulations then limited domestic flight crews to 8 hours flight time in any 24-hour period. Douglas was reluctant to build the aircraft until American Airlines President C. R. Smith ordered 25 at a total price of $40 million thus covering Douglas development costs. The DC-7 wing was based on that of the DC-4 and DC-6, with the same span. The fuselage was 40 inches, 100 centimeters, longer than the DC-6B. Full 18-cylinder right R3350 duplex cyclone turbo compound engines provided power. The prototype flew in May 1953 and American received their first DC-7 in November, inaugurating the first non-stop East Coast to West Coast service in the country, unrealistically scheduled just under the 8-hour limit for one crew, and forcing rival TWA to offer a similar service with its super constellations. Both aircraft frequently experienced in-flight engine failures, causing many flights to be diverted. Some blamed this on the need for high power settings to meet the national schedules, causing overheating and failure of the engine's power recovery turbines. DC-7B, edit. The DC-7 was followed by the DC-7B with slightly more power, and on some DC-7BS, Panam and South African Airways, fuel tanks over the wing in the rear of the engine nacelles, each carrying 220 US gallons, 183 imp gal, 833 L. South African Airways used this variant to fly Johannesburg to London with one stop. Panam's DC-7BS started flying transatlantic in summer 1955 
scheduled one hour 45 minutes faster than the Super Strata cruiser from New York to London or Paris. DC-7C, edit. Early DC-7S were purchased only by US carriers. European carriers could not take advantage of the small range increase of the early DC-7, so Douglas released an extended range variant, the DC-7C, 7Cs, in 1956. Two 5 feet, 1.5 M, wing root inserts added fuel capacity, reduced interference drag and made the cabin quieter by moving the engines farther outboard. All DC-7CS had the nacelle fuel tanks previously seen on Pan Americans and South Africans DC-7BS. The fuselage, which had been extended over the DC-6BS with a 40-inch, 100 centimeters, plug behind the wing for the DC-7 and DC-7B, was lengthened again with a 40-inch plug ahead of the wing to give the DC-7C a total length of 112 feet 3 in. 34.21 M. Operational History, Edit. Since the late 1940s Panam and other airlines had scheduled a few non-stop flights from New York to Europe, but westward non-stops against the prevailing wind were rarely possible with an economic payload. The Lockheed Super Constellation and DC-7B that appeared in 1955 could occasionally make the westward trip but in summer 1956 Panam's DC-7C finally started doing it fairly reliably. Bork was forced to respond by purchasing DC-7CS rather than wait on the delivery of the Bristol Britannia. The DC-7C found its way into several other overseas airlines fleets, including SAS, which used them on cross-polar flights to North America and Asia. The DC-7C sold better than its rival, the Lockheed L-1649 Stalina, which entered service a year later, but sales were cut short by the arrival of Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8 jets in 1958-60. Starting in 1959 Douglas began converting DC-7S and DC-7CS into DC-7 freighters to extend their useful lives. The airframes were fitted with large forward and rear freight doors and some cabin windows were removed. The predecessor DC-6, especially the DC-6B, established a reputation for straightforward engineering and reliability. Pratt & Whitney, manufacturer of the DC-6S double WASP engines, did not offer an effective larger engine apart from the WASP Major, which had a reputation for poor reliability. Douglas turned to Wright Aeronautical for a more powerful engine. The duplex cyclone had reliability issues of its own, and this affected the DC-7S service record. Carriers who had both DC-6S and DC-7S in their fleets usually replaced the newer DC-7S first once jets started to arrive. Some airlines retired their DC-7S after little more than five years of service, whereas most DC-6S lasted longer and sold more readily on the second-hand market. Basic price of a new DC-7 was around $823,308, 570,000 pounds. Price of a DC-7B was around $982,226, 680,000 pounds, in 1955, rising to $1,184,490, 820,000 pounds in 1957. Similarly, the price of a DC-7C was $1,155,560, 800,000 pounds, in 1956, increasing to $1,343,385, 930,000 pounds, by 1958. Cost of the DC-7F speed freighter conversion was around $166,112, 115,000 pounds, per aircraft. Variants, edit. DC-7. 
Production variant, 105 built. DC-7B. First long-range variant with higher gross weight and fuel capacity, with most of the added fuel in saddle tanks in enlarged engine nacelles. Only Panam and South African DC-7BS had the saddle tanks. 112 built. DC-7C-7Cs. Longer range variant with non-stop transatlantic capability, improved 3,400 HP, 2,500 kilowatts, R3,350 engines and increased fuel capacity mainly in longer wings, 121 built. DC-7D. Unbuilt variant with Rolls-Royce Tyne turboprops. DC-7F. Freight conversion of all three variants with two large freight doors. Operators, edit. Main article, Douglas DC-7 operators. Airlines, edit. DC-7S were used by Alitalia, American Airlines, Bork, Braniff Airways, Caledonian Airways, Delta Airlines, Eastern Airlines, Flying Tigers, Japan Airlines, KLM, Mexicana de Aviation, National Airlines, Northwest Orient, Pan Air do Brazil, Pan American World Airways, Riddle Airlines, Sabna, SAS, South African Airways, Swissair, Turkish Airlines, Transports Aerians Intercontinentos, and United Airlines. 17 DC-7S remained on the U.S. registry in 2010. They were used mainly for cargo and as aerial firefighting etankers. Due to its engine problems, the DC-7 has not had the same longevity as the DC-6, which is still used by a number of commercial operators. Military operators, edit. 1 Colombia. 2 France. 3 Mexico. 4 Rhodesia flown by civilian sanctions buster Jack Malok. Orders and production, edit. Airline DC-7, DC-7B, DC-7 C notes. Alitalia, 6. American Airlines 3424, launch customer for the DC-7 with an original order for 25. Braniff Airways, 7. British Overseas Airways Corporation, 10. Continental Airlines, 5. Delta Airlines 1010. Eastern Airlines 49. Iran Air 1. Japan Airlines 4. KLM 15. Mexicana 4. National Airlines 44. Northwest Orient Airlines 14. Pan Air do Brazil 6. Panagra 6. Pan American World Airways. 627. Persian Air Services, 2. Sabna, 103 were leased. Scandinavian Airlines System, 14. South African Airways, 4. Swissair, 5. Transports Aerians Intercontinentos, 4. United Airlines, 57. 2 were lost in mid air collisions. Douglas Aircraft, 2. Written off before delivery. 1. DC-7B prototype delivered to Delta Airlines. 1. DC-7C prototype delivered to Pan Air do Brazil. Total 105, 112, 121 total built, 338. Accidents and incidents, edit. The Douglas DC-7 suffered 82 incidents and accidents with a total of 714 fatalities. The 30th of June, 1956. United Airlines Flight 718, a DC-7, N6324 C, collided over the Grand Canyon with TWA Flight 2, an L-1049 Super Constellation. N6902C, resulting in the deaths of 128 people on both aircraft. The 31st of January, 1957. 
a DC-7, N8210H, still owned by Douglas crashed into a schoolyard in the Park Oima area of Los Angeles, California, following a mid-air collision with Northrop F-89J Scorpion 52 to 1870, resulting in the deaths of the four crew members aboard the DC-7, the pilot of the Scorpion jet, and three students on the ground. The 5th of March, 1957. An American Airlines DC-7B, N316A, on a flight from Idlewild, JFK, Airport to Love Field, Dallas, suffered failure of the Hash-1 engine. The propeller and nose section detached and struck the fuselage, leading to decompression. The pilot made a successful emergency landing at Memphis, there were no fatalities or injuries. The plane was repaired and returned to service. The 28th of June, 1957. An Eastern Airlines DC-7B, N808D, collided with a parked Eastern Airlines Lockheed L-1049, N6212C, at Miami International Airport after returning from a training flight. Fuel leaked and both aircraft burned out. The 1st of February, 1958. Panam Flight 70, a DC-7C, N733 PA, Clipper Blue Jacket, landed wheels up at Schiphol Airport as a result of pilot error. All 16 on board survived. The aircraft was repaired and returned to service as a freighter. See also the 26th of July, 1970 below. The 10th of March, 1958. A DC-7B, N846D, still owned by Douglas crashed at Long Beach, California during a test flight before delivery to Eastern Airlines. The 25th of March, 1958. Braniff Flight 971. A DC-7C, N5904, crashed shortly after takeoff from Miami while attempting to return after an engine caught fire. Nine passengers out of 24 people aboard died in the accident. The 21st of April, 1958. United Airlines Flight 736, a DC-7, N6328 C, EN route from Los Angeles to Denver, collided with an Ellis Air Force Base, North American F-100 Super Sabre F-100 F, two-seater, 56 to 3755, near Las Vegas. Both aircraft crashed out of control resulting in the deaths of 49 people. The 18th of May, 1958. A Sabna DC-7C, OSFA, crashed near Casablanca Amfa Airport during the attempted landing. All nine crew members and 52 of the 56 passengers died. The 24th of September, 1959. TIE Flight 307, a DC-7C, crashed at Bordeaux Airport with the loss of 54 lives. After takeoff, the aircraft failed to gain altitude and collided with trees 3 kilometers, 1.9 me, from the start of the takeoff. The 16th of November, 1959. National Airlines Flight 967, a DC-7B on a flight from Tampa, Florida, to New Orleans, crashed into the Gulf of Mexico. All 42 occupants perished. Although sabotage was suspected, no definite cause of the crash was determined due to a lack of evidence. The aircraft was owned by Delta Airlines. The 26th of February, 1960. Alitalia Flight 618, a DC-7C, Idavo, crashed at Shannon Airport, Ireland shortly after takeoff following a loss of altitude while making a left turn with 34 fatalities out of 52 passengers and crew. No cause was established for this accident. The 27th of June, 1960. 
A Cuban a day aviation DC-7 took off from Jose Marti International Airport, Cuba, to Idlewood International L, now JFK International Airport. Near cruising altitude, engine hash 3 and hash 4 failed and caught fire. They safely landed at Key West International Airport with no fatalities. The 14th of July, 1960. Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 1211, a DC-7C, N292, ditched off Polilo Island, Philippines due to failure of the number 2 engine and fire, one person, out of 58 on board, died when the number 2 propeller separated and penetrated the fuselage. The 18th of February, 1961. A Palam DC-7CF, N745 Pa struck a mound of earth short of the runway in Stuttgart while attempting an ILS approach, shearing off the undercarriage and hash one engine. The pilots retained control and were able to climb away, then make a belly landing at Nuremberg Airport. The aircraft was written off. The 1st of November, 1961. A Pain Air du Brasil DC-7C, PPPDO. Flying from Sal to Recife crashed into a hill about 2.7 kilometers, 1.7 mi, short of the runway at Recife. 45 passengers and crew out of the 88 persons aboard lost their lives. The accident was attributed to pilot error. The 4th of March, 1962. Caledonian Airways Flight 153 crashed into a swamp shortly after takeoff from Twila International Airport. All 111 people on board died. It is the worst single aircraft accident of a DC-7. The 22nd of October, 1962. Northwest Airlines Flight 292, a DC-7C, N285 with seven crew and 95 passengers, made a successful water landing in Sika Sound just before 1 p.m. local time after struggling with propeller problems for 45 minutes while operating as a military charter flight between McCord Air Force Base and Elmendorf Air Force Base. The plane stayed afloat for 24 minutes after coming to rest in the water giving the occupants ample time to evacuate into life rafts with only six minor injuries reported. All passengers and crew were quickly rescued by U.S. Coast Guard ships. The cause was an overspeeding propeller when the blower section on engine number two failed. The 30th of November, 1962. Eastern Airlines Flight 512, a DC-7B on a flight from Charlotte, North Carolina, to New York Idle World, crashed after a missed approach due to fog. This accident, which cost 25 lives, out of 51 on board, was attributed to improper crew procedures. The 3rd of June, 1963. Northwest Airlines Flight 293, a military air transport service flight from McCord Air Force Base in Washington State to Elmendorf Air Force Base in Alaska crashed into the Pacific Ocean near Annette Island, Alaska, with the loss of all 101 people aboard. Due to the lack of evidence, no cause was established for this accident. The 8th of February, 1965. Eastern Airlines Flight 663 crashed a few minutes after takeoff from John F. Kennedy Airport in New York after taking evasive action to avoid a possible collision with another airliner, Panam Flight 212, a Boeing 707. All 84 passengers and crew died. The 7th of December, 1968. A North American aircraft trading DC-7C, VRBCY, crashed during approach to Ulai airstrip following triple engine failure during a relief flight, killing all four crew. The 5th of June, 1969. A Swedish Red Cross DC-7B, SEERP, was shot down by a Nigerian Air Force MiG-17 and crashed at Ike, Nigeria, killing all four crew. 
the aircraft was operating a supply flight from Fernando Po, now Bayaco, to Biafra. The 26th of July, 1970. A Narco ferry flight of a DC-7 CF, VRBCT, from Kinshasa suffered an explosive failure of the Hush-3 engine. The pilots succeeded in making a belly landing on two engines, engine hash 4 having been inoperable for the entire flight, however the plane was damaged beyond repair. This aircraft had previously crashed in 1958. The 2nd of October, 1970. A Spantax DC-7C, ECATQ, was written off at Barrages Airport. The 31st of December, 1972. Professional baseball player Roberto Clement and four others in a chartered DC-7 died when the plane crashed shortly after takeoff from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Only parts of the fuselage and the body of pilot Jerry Hill were recovered. The cause was traced to maintenance and pilot errors. The 21st of June, 1973. A Skyways International DC-7C, N296, crashed in the Everglades six minutes after takeoff from Miami International Airport, apparently caused by an onboard fire and forward slash or severe turbulence. Three crew members, the sole occupants, died. The aircraft was on lease to Warnaco Incorporated. The 3rd of March, 1974. A Douglas DC-7C forward slash F, EIAWG, operating an Airtras TEO charter flight from Dublin landed at Luton Airport on runway 08 just after midnight but failed to achieve reverse thrust. Normal braking application also was ineffective and the emergency pneumatic brakes were applied. All main wheel tires burst. The aircraft overran the runway and continued over the steep bank at the eastern perimeter finally coming to rest in soft ground 90 meters beyond. The situation had also been made worse by an inadvertent application of forward thrust by the crew in trying to achieve reverse thrust. Three of the six passengers and two of the four crew were injured. The badly damaged aircraft was written off. The 4th of October, 1976. An Emirates Air Transport DC-7CF, TZ Arc, struck Mount Kenya due to a premature descent, killing the four crew. The 12th of September, 1977. A safe air cargo DC-7BF, N6314J crashed on climb out from Yakutat airport after an engine lost power and caught fire, killing the four crew. 14 CFR 91 subpart D was revised in the wake of this accident. The 6th of September, 1978. An Advance Aviation Incorporated DC-7CF, N244B, was being used to smuggle marijuana when it crashed near Farmerville. Louisiana due to pilot error, killing one of six on board. 35 bales of marijuana were recovered from the wreckage. The 22nd of June, 1979. A GO Transportation DC-7CF, N357L, crashed on climb out from Barstow Airport due to overloading and loss of engine power, caused by improper 100 octane fuel, killing one of six crew. The 14th of September, 1979. A Butler Aircraft Incorporated DC-7, N4SW, transporting company employees to Mead Ford, Oregon, crashed on the crest of Sevilla Mountain near Klamath Falls, Oregon. The crash, which claimed the 12 occupants aboard, was attributed to the crew's decision to undertake a night flight at low altitude. 1980. An Aero Services Corporation DC-7CF, N8219H, was shot down and crashed in Colombia during a smuggling flight. The 27th of July, 1980. A Lambda Air Cargo DC-7CF, CP1291, burned out on the ground at Truyolo Airport. 
the 28th of November, 1980. A Central Air Service DC-7B, N816D, crashed near Pecos Municipal Airport, Texas, soon after takeoff killing the pilot and co-pilot on board. The plane entered a steep 90 degrees left bank after takeoff, descended fast with the no-2 prop feathered and crashed in a field.